So March was a really good reading month. Hello everybody! Like my intro said, March was a really good reading month. I read a total of 11 books, which I don't even remember the last time I even broke double digits when it comes to reading. I want to say it was maybe a year or two ago. It's been a while. So March, obviously, like I said, was a great reading month. And that's for a lot of reasons. There was a lot of good books I read. Also because a lot of us are quarantined at home for safety obviously and with that there's a lot more time for reading because there's not a lot of stuff you can do so you know it's a good bad thing quarantine all that kind of stuff either way 11 books i have reviewed a good majority of these so any um reviews i have done that you're interested in hearing more about the books i will link down below i've also talked about a good majority of these books in two different reading vlogs i did this month again they will be linked down below down below is a ton of links if you're interested in them. So always with my wrap ups, I'm gonna start with my least favorite book I read in March, working up to my favorite book. First up is Things My Son Needs to Know About the World by Frederick Bachman. This is a nonfiction book. If you guys don't know, I've read every single Frederick Bachman book. I even have an author's video all about his books. This is his only nonfiction one and he wrote this when his son was born and it's just a whole bunch of stories of things that he wants his son to know, like learning about Ikea and about love and things like that. And I thought I was really gonna love it because I love Frederick Bachman's writing so much. Unfortunately, I didn't love it. I only gave it a three out of five and that's being rather generous in my opinion. It was just, I think it was more humorous than I expected it to be. I thought it was gonna be really heartwarming and really gripping in that regards, but it was more funny and lighthearted. So if you're interested in that, I would recommend it for that. If you're looking into going into the book, think it's going to be very, you know, heartwarming and have a lot of really really core life lessons I don't think this one's it for you so yeah three out of five it did disappoint me I'm not gonna lie to you I did think I was gonna give this book a five out of five when I first picked it up but sad to say that's not the case. <laughs> Another book I thought I was gonna give a five when I read the synopsis was Happiness for Beginners by Katherine Center. I also gave this one a three out of five. This was a huge letdown for me, I will say. This is one of her earlier ones. If you guys don't know, she's an adult contemporary writer, I'll say. I've read her two like most recent releases. I liked one of them. I love the other one. So I was excited for this one because it was like wilderness and love. And I was like, ooh, those are all things I like and love and reading. Um, but it just disappointed me. So in this book, we follow um, 30 year old um, Helen who is just recently divorced and she's really having a hard time finding herself. She doesn't know you know what happiness is and things like that so she thinks that she takes this really extreme wilderness course that she will discover happiness and who she is. Little does she know that her younger brother's best friend is also going on this wilderness retreat and he is 10 years younger than her and he's had a crush on her for forever and he's like really in love with her and throughout the course of the book they fall in love and it's a big you know age gap like oh my gosh 10 years so much. Much. I can't believe it and I'm like uh, so it just I just didn't feel like the love I don't even mind the age, the age gap like I don't know why it was such a big deal in the book but it was um but I just didn't think the characters connected well at all I kind of fell in love like automatically insta lovey but there was nothing to grasp on that insta love I just didn't enjoy it I will say if you're a sucker for wilderness books and any books that have hiking and wilderness retreats and camps maybe check this one out otherwise I didn't really love it. Three out of five. <laughs> then I read Dark Lover by J.R. Ward. This is the first book in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. Um, and this series is like 18 books deep. This is an adult's emphasis on the adult um, paranormal fantasy series. It's all about vampires. If you don't know, hello, my name's Heather. I love vampires ever since the 90s with Buffy. <laughs> So I liked it. I didn't love it. This, you know, a lot of vampire books, I'm not gonna lie to you, are very possessive romances, especially vampires, or tend to be possessive, like you're mine, you're my mate, you're everything, possess, possess, possessive. That's too much. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it pulls it off well for me, and certain cases sometimes it doesn't. This one was kind of uh um this one we follow the first book in the series, follow a character named Wrath, which was one of my biggest dislikes of the whole book is the freaking characters names there's like wrath and rage and torment and they all spell it weird and they just I don't know why but anyway wrath is like the king of the vampires the black the black dagger brotherhood and he's been entrusted to like help his friend's daughter become a vampire because she's half human and then he kind of falls in love with her which is another like weird thing <laughs> it's all about that we also have these like other vampires I mean let's just be honest with you it's a lot of steamy times 
SEX with not a lot of plot in it. <laughs> um, so if you're looking for that, great. If not, you know, I will continue on the series very slowly. I didn't love it. I gave it a three out of five. It was enjoyable. I'm not going to lie to you. It is interesting with the characters and stuff, but there was just, it's just not my favorite vampires. You know, maybe it takes a lot for me to be pleased with vampire books. I don't know. Either way, like I said, I will continue on the series. I know this series is very, very well loved, so please don't think I'm slamming on it. I just didn't love it, love it. The last three-star book I have is The Neighbors by Nicola Gill. This one... <laughs> I, I really, really wanted to love. I bought it because I was like, I'm gonna fall in love with it, and I didn't, which happens a lot. Um, so this book, we follow a character named Jenny, who's 34, and she is a PR person, and she discovers her boyfriend hooking up with her boss one day, and all of a sudden, you know, her role falls apart, and she's out of a job because, you know, her boss, and she's desperately trying to find a new job, and then she has an upstairs neighbor um, named Cassie Frost, who's like this big London celebrity that's kind of older, that the tabloids have really been hurting recently, like she's just been slammed all over the place when it comes to tabloids, so Cassie wants to hire her as her PR you know, person. And it's about just her, Ginny's life and how when she meets Cassie Ross, it kind of changes it and how, you know, they become friends and Ginny discovers, you know, more in her life. And I liked it. I didn't love it. You know, I say a lot of times that some of my favorite books are really character development books where there's not a lot of plot, but a really good character development. And this one I think could have been that, but I just didn't love Ginny. Ginny just made a lot of the wrong choices in the love department and she kept going back to the wrong choices. And I'm like, you're not young anymore. You're 34. You should understand when it comes to like, you know, your heart and what's the right or wrong thing. If it was like a YA book, I would understand that more immensely. But you know, being a little bit older, I think she should have had a better grasp on it, but that's just me. And I just really didn't connect with it. So sad to say I gave it a three out of five. I was really hoping this was going to be like a diamond in the rough book where I've heard literally nobody talk about it and I would give it a five and, you know, it would just be like an underrated read that I could recommend a time that nobody's heard of. But sad to say I didn't love it. I liked it. It was just very middle of the road for me, honestly. Moving into the four star departments, I have a lot of these. The first one being A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. This is an adult romance book about a girl that's a webcomic writer and she's also autistic and she develops a relationship with her neighbor who is like the best guy ever who cooks for her and cares for her and I really enjoyed it. I really like Talia Hibbert's books and the way she writes characters that have different disabilities you know with autism everything every character in the autism spectrum is totally different because it is such a wide spectrum and I appreciate reading every single you know, every different angle of autism I can because my son is autistic and, you know, there's not going to be one character that you connect to completely when it comes to autism because it's such a vast spectrum. But I really like the way she represented it and I, love, and I like the romance. If you love romantic books and just really cute, fluffy, steamy books, I would definitely check out any Italia Hover book, especially A Girl Like Her. I enjoyed it. Four out of five. So the only YA book I read this month, that's right, I didn't realize that till the month was over that I was like, oh, I only read one young adult book. I'm not mad about it. Moment of Truth by Casey West. So this is Casey West's newest book. If you don't know, she writes a lot of contemporary books that I really, really enjoy. Um, some more than others. I have a whole video on her as well. This is her one that got released that when I read the synopsis, I was like, what? It didn't make sense at all. And even when I explain it to you, it's probably not going to make a ton of sense. But it is a really solid read that I gave a four out of five. So we follow a character named Hadley who um, is like a swim captain. She's, you know, she's very type A. She likes organizing, things like that. And then when this like Heath Hall faker crashes her swim meet, everything kind of changes. And now Heath Hall in the Casey West world, which I believe he was in another book, is like kind of a famous character. Imagine... I don't I don't even know the freaking character's name. Like imagine the character from Mission Impossible, whatever his name is. Pretty much there's this person running around with this Heath Hall action figure, action hero mask, and he just kind of does things and nobody knows who he is under the mask and things like that. But ever since he destroyed Hadley Swim Meet, she's like, I'm gonna find out who's under that mask for sure. And then she um tries to figure out who it is, then she finds a relation, and then she gets in a relationship, and it's really cute. I would say, like, the Heath Hall aspect is kind of minuscule, but when it gets more expanded on in the book, it's really actually very nice. So yes, that synopsis I gave you was trash, but the book is really good. It's about something more opening up, becoming more lighthearted, you know, just accepting things, and I really enjoyed it. Definitely one of my favorite Casey West books, hence why I gave it a four. Even though the synopsis is just 
I, I, don't, I don't know why the synopsis is like that, but whatever, moving on. I have The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. Christina Lauren is two authors comprised into one. They write a lot of adult romance books. I will be doing a video on them very, very soon. I have to read some more of the really older backlist titles. But so in this book we have the trips and the trips the way I describe them are Chippa Joanna Gaines. The only what the only reason I explain them is that is because they are you know Chippa Joanna Gaines are very influential right now um, in the DIY world. I don't really know anything about them. I don't know about their love life, their marriage, kids. I don't know but when I think about DIYs I think about them so that's why I kind of correlate them two together. So the trips are pretty much the gains in this world and they have lots of shows and books and da 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 and they're going and they just are releasing a new book on marriage or going on a book tour but little does the world know is that they loathe each other they're in a very strained marriage it's hanging on by its last threads and they're just grappling and so basically this book does not follow them at all but rather their assistant so Rusty Tripp has an assistant named James then Melissa Tripp has an assistant named Carrie and we follow Carrie and James and they're kind of you know they have to keep on this book tour that they're going on they have to keep the trips at bay they have to keep them you know still being in love in the public eye but you know kind of hiding it behind doors overall it was cute it was fluffy it was a solid christina lauren book it wasn't one of my favorites nor was it one of my least favorites i would say again if you love romance and steaminess and stuff like that i would recommend it it's a solid one on that front but you know it's not like one of my favorite favorites by them but again like i said a still solid christina lauren book in my opinion and i finally read little woman by louisa may alcott are you shocked because i am i read this beast of a book um and it took me a little while it took me like two and a half weeks because i really took my time with it because i don't read classics i'm not really interested in them. I've come to terms with that. It's taken me a while to accept that because I thought I was different and odd because I wasn't liking classics, but every reader is different. I really enjoyed Little Woman. I gave it a four and they were like blasphemy. Everyone gives Little Woman a five. And the reason I gave it a four is because there were a lot of parts of it to me that were slow. And that's just my honest opinion. I'm trying to be very honest with my ratings this year. And that is the reason why I gave it a four and not a five. Overall, the characters, five out of five. If you don't know Little Woman, it's about, it takes place in the 1860s, I believe, like near the Civil War. Um, we follow the March sisters. Their dad has gone off in the Civil War to serve as a chaplain. We follow Joe March, Meg, Beth, and Amy, and we follow their four lives pretty much when they start young, like 16, to when they get adults and their love life and things like that. And it's just a beautiful, heartwarming book that I would recommend everyone to read. This is a classic I think anybody could read. It does take a little bit to get into the language and the flow of things, but just the characters, the sisters, are really the shining star of this book, and I loved it dearly, so I would recommend it. Also, the newest adaptation I thought was a great adaptation. I still need to watch like the three other ones they have but overall I am happy to have read Little Woman and to finish my goal for 2020 already with reading classic and reading Little Woman so I would recommend again if you're not a classic reader like myself to definitely check this one out and the last three books I have to share with you are all five stars a five star for me in a month is uh, rare because I'm just so particular I guess but three in a month that's crazy. So the first one is You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hoggle. This is an adult um, contemporary romance book. This is the one that shocked me. I did not think I was going to give it a 5 out of 5 when I read the synopsis, but I loved it. So in this book, we have a character, Naomi and Nicholas, and they are engaged and they have a great relationship at the beginning, but really Naomi kind of loathes Nicholas and she really wants out of the engagement. Only problem is she can't get out of the engagement because Nicholas's parents are really, really rich and they are fronting the bill for the whole wedding. So she knows that if she backs out of the wedding she's gonna have to pay for that and that can't happen because she doesn't have any money so you know one day when she finally like says you know I really don't like you I don't want to have this marriage and he's like you know I don't like you either but we had something really good I want to work on that again and they become friends they first start like pranking each other a lot with like hated comments and then they start to become friends again and then they fall in love again this is a dissection of a relationship again I love books like that I love reading about a relationship and the core of it and how each person works in a relationship their wants and needs and that are different than another person and I liked it so I would say I always say I would say but I would say um if you love relationship books and just watching kind of a relationship fall apart but also try to figure out how to put it back together because you still love that person I would recommend this book it was funny it was sweet both the characters had an immense amount of growing up to do in my opinion but I loved and adored it but highly recommend it then uh, my last two favorites are vampire <laughs> 
books or like paranormal books, if you will. Um, I have Reborn Yesterday by Tessa Bailey. I found this on a whim. I did not know Tessa Bailey was releasing a new book. I believe she self-published this and I loved it so much. This is a vampire romance and it is everything I wanted a vampire romance. I could gush on and on about it. I will be filming a five reasons why you should read it very very soon when my physical copy comes in the mail but all you know about this is we follow a character named Ginny who is a mortician and her dad has passed away a while ago and she's holding up his legacy at their funeral home and when she's about to embalm this body, this dead body, the guy wakes up. It's Jonas and she learns that he is a vampire and they are very connected to one another and they learn that they can't be because it's you know not good and it's just about that. Again it's got the mate thing, the possessive thing, but I loved these characters so much. It was very insta-lovey. There's a lot of vampire romance books that are. They're all just insta-lovey probably, but I loved every second of it. This is very, very adult, I will say, like, but I just, I'm a sucker for vampire romances. And this is like, I feel like it's a mesh between like a more adult Twilight and then a Court of Mist and Fury, maybe? I don't know if that's a correct way to say it, but I just really enjoyed it. And I'm so, so glad she's continuing out the series with other side characters because they were amazing. So again, I'm going to film a video all about it very, very soon because I could gush about it. And then my favorite book of the month is no surprise is that is House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass, the first book in her Crescent City series. I have a whole video dedicated to this. I loved it. It was great. It's an adult paranormal fantasy as well. It was about Bryn, who is kind of half human, half fae, and her best friend's like the pack, the lead pack of the werewolves, and her best friend gets killed, and Bryce is obviously in a lot of grief. Now, years later, you know, her best friend's murder case gets brought up again because the person they thought that did it did not do it. So um, Bryce gets entrusted with the job of finding out who killed her best friend. And she's also paired with this like archangel named Hunt and they are very, you know, hate to love at first. And it's just a beautiful story. It does a lot with grief, love, things like that. I fell in love with this series. I am a sucker for Sarah J. Mass books, I will say. I'm probably gonna like this more than Throne of Glass, maybe Miss and Fury, that's just me. But again, if you wanna hear really, really in-depth thoughts about it, please check out my review. Those are all the books that I read in March. A lot of them, a lot of really good ones. I'm kind of nervous for April because March was such a good reading month that I'm scared to see what other months are going to be like. But needless to say, I read some of my favorite books in the entire year this month and I am happy about that. Again, if you've read any of these books, please let me know. Maybe I, maybe after hearing me talk about it. Are you interested in any books? Are you going to steer clear of any books? I would love to hear. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.